All right, so you think you can't watercolor, but you like the watercolor look. Today we're gonna to be making five Christmas cards with the watercolor look, but without the watercolor stress. Watercolor Christmas cards are a delight, but not everybody has the confidence to create them. So I'm gonna walk you through some very easy techniques today. I'm using the Kuretake Ganzai Tambi watercolors. You can use whatever watercolors you have. You can even use a water-based dye ink and get a very similar look. I'm going to start with the most simple of the techniques and create a couple of washed backgrounds. I've got some watercolor cardstock. This is a ranger one. It's a nice bright white and I'm using the smooth side purely because I'm going to be doing some stamping on it. I've got some clean water and I've basically painted a clear clean rectangle background and now I'm dropping in some color. I'm using a nice wide brush but you can use whatever brush you may have and I actually want my colors to mix together so I'm using a wet on wet technique so I put a base of wet water added the wet watercolor on top and now I'm adding a second color and the colors are going to mix. If I didn't want them to mix I would allow the first color to dry and then add the second color but this gives a really fun look on the background, especially because we're going to be stamping over top. You can add as little or as much color as you want. You just do need to be aware that some colors won't play nicely together. And if you're not sure what colors will mix well and what won't, then you can either practice on a piece of scrap cardstock off to the side and just see how it looks to you. Or you can use a color wheel and that's going to sort of let you know what the colors will look like when you've mixed them. The second background I'm creating here has a more loosey-goosey kind of shape and that's the beauty of this technique. You can add as little or as much as you want and don't throw anything out. If you're not happy with the background that you create, then you can always die cut it into a beautiful flower don't waste it and if you're not sure just set it off to the side to dry before you commit because sometimes it actually dries a lot prettier than what you think it's going to <laughs> so I've made a quick grab through my stash and got lots of sort of foliage and floral stamps for Christmas as well as some silhouettes you can use whatever you have and if you don't have any stamps this is something you could always draw as well if you have the confidence to do that to get a very similar look I'm stamping out the images I want to paint on some of the watercolor cardstock and I'm using a contour ink here which does make it a bit hard to see for you but it does react well with the watercolor. I could have used my pigment ink here first that probably would have been easier for you to see if I had done that. I was just wanting to start painting straight away and didn't want to wait for that to dry. Now don't freak out, <laughs> I'm literally just adding a layer of washed green paint over the outside of the wreath, diluting it down with a little bit of water, I'm not doing anything fancy and you can actually see that contour ink right now, it was hard to see before but I am going to come in and stamp over top and that's where the misty tool is a really handy one in stamping because you can actually re-stamp over top knowing that your image is going to be in the same position but you'll see that a little bit later on. So again I'm not waiting for this paint to dry before I'm dropping in my second colour. I'm using primarily just the green and the blue again and I'm focusing the blue on mostly on the leaf images of this wreath. Now I want to take some of today's cards just a little bit further so hold tight because I've got a bonus tip I'm going to be sharing with you really soon. Now this card really ended up with a washed out look which I like I think I'm not really 100% sold on it. Let me know in the comments below if you think you would have added more depth to the leaves. I was trying to keep the ideas really simple today so I decided not to do that on that particular design and I do like the washed out look. It's just not something I typically would do so much. <laughs> so here you can see how easy it is to add a simple wash of color on this poinsettia. I have added some clean water to each of the leaves, picked up the color on the tip of my brush and just dropped it in. 
Another thing to be aware of with watercoloring is that will dry lighter and my first layer of color was way too pale and looked really washed out so once it had dried I could simply come back in and add another layer of color. It doesn't look like much yet but hold tight <laughs> we'll get there. These cards will turn out beautiful in the end. My next image is uh, Mondo Holly and it's actually the one I probably spent the most time coloring and I wish I had have done a more washed out look on this one as well but for some reason I I tried to keep in the lines and I was <laughs> really trying to do simple washed out coloring on these cards but this wasn't hard to color I promise I did the same technique that I did on the poinsettia image I dropped in some clean water and then picked up the color and brushed it over the leaves and then added the deeper color like the blue at the base and more in the center of the leaves just to give it that bit of shading but I think doing a simple wash of color over this would have worked beautifully as well to add a little bit of depth on the berries here I once it had dried I literally just picked up some stronger color on the end of my brush I have got a fairly dry brush there and just added some depth to the image as well as came in with the um, blue yet again to add some shading on the leaves and on the berries as well so once these had all dried this is where the magic happens and this is the magic of the misty i was able to re-stamp the images and i used some black pigment ink and basically because i am stamping on watercolor cardstock i did have to do a couple of passes even though i had stamped on the smooth side and i just love the misty for this alone <laughs> So it gives you the confidence to be able to restamp an image without the stress. So all of these images got a coat of black pigment ink and it really brings them to life I think. And for the background panels that I created on this blue and green one here I decided to add a silhouette style image of a couple of trees and these are actually layering stamps and I'm only using one of the layers on each of the trees rather than do multi layers but you could actually do multi layers and do them in a dark blue ink or even a dark green that would look great as well you might have noticed that I'm actually batching things out here so I'm doing all my painting at once I'm doing all my stamping at once and then I'll do all my assembling it just speeds things along especially with watercolors because they do take that little bit of drying time between applications and this Mondo Amaryllis is a beautiful Christmas flower but you could use whatever images you have. I've added some nice strong double-sided tape because the watercolor can have a tendency to warp. I did run these images through my die cutting machine to flatten them out a little bit. There's a bonus tip. And here's my big bonus tip. Make your cards shaped cards. But not just shaped cards. Make them shaped gift tag cards. I love big gift tags on a present and these are so much fun to do that with. So I've done two with a circle die and one with the arch and I'm going to add my sentiments to all of them now. To line up this multi sentiment image I used my misty alignment tool and I could just check that the placement of the words was going to be correct and nice and straight and with the circle die cuts I used my sticky grid mat from Sweet Petunia and that just means because it's a circle I wasn't able to tuck it in the corner and know that I could restamp if I needed to so it just temporarily adheres it to the background gives me time to line up my sentiment and stamp it out and if I'm not particularly happy with my stamping I can actually come back in and stamp it again because my panel hasn't moved my die cut hasn't moved because it's been held in place on that sticky mat hey cheering <laughs> lucky I used it and I did the same when I stamped out my sentiment on the wreath card now on all of the designs I did add some splatters some just got 
gold and some had a couple of colors it's just a leftover paint that's on the palette often I use that to add a bit of color to a design if it feels like it's lacking something and I am protecting the stamped sentiment with just a piece of scrap cardstock because I've had that happen before where I've totally ruined a card because I've splattered over the top <laughs> and you can't read the sentiment anymore and I decided to add some golden bling you could even use Nouveau drops or even draw on some if you've got a gold gel pen you could draw some on if you wanted to keep it nice and flat for postage or even die cut some tiny circles or stars for the tree Now I do have some, I want to say some, this is a pack of 60 gel pens, <laughs> glitter gel pens, and I added a couple of highlights to this amaryllis. I, it's hard to see here, but I did color the center of the flowers in and then added some gold highlights to the center as well as the tips of the stamen. And with 60 colors to choose from, I was bound to find one that was the perfect match for that purple color in the flower. And I also want to share with you how to create any shape into a card pretty much. Basically I've cut two further circles. I'm going to add one to the back of my initial panel just using a small amount of liquid glue. You actually don't need to do this step. I just like to cover up the back of my panel and just have it looking a bit nicer. And then for my second piece of card I'm literally just coming in and drawing a score line. You can do this wherever you want. You just need to allow enough space to add some glue or adhesive tape and you need to use a nice strong adhesive here or a liquid glue and then to make it into a card so that it will stand up I'm lining my score line up with the lines on my paper trimmer and then I can just cut the very end of the back of the card off and that's just going to make this card stand up without sort of rolling everywhere and it's as simple as attaching the front of the card to the glue or the adhesive at the top and then it will stand up like a card but let's take it a step further and I'm going to make this into a gift tag card and it serves double duty especially if you're running late on design ideas or time for Christmas to get Christmas cards and gift cards made this is a awesome idea I just literally use a hole punch to punch a hole and then I can add my twine and then either keep it as a card or tie it onto a gift and this card also got the golden treatment if I'm adding I like to add gems in groups of three or five and Often I just use a triangle shape. I find that I focus around a sentiment. And I just wanted to quickly show you for this particular shape, for the arch, it was easy because it has a flat base already, but I did need to cut another two pieces of the same shape and I did exactly the same thing. I just attached it and that made it into a card. I do love my bling at Christmas time. Let me know if you bling everything at Christmas or are you a sparkle person? Which do you prefer? I like them both. <laughs> Made my final design into a gift tag slash card as well. And instead of adding the gold gems this time, I came in with my gel pen and just added some highlights to the berries on the wreath I just thought it the muted colors I didn't want to add too much to it can you see it's just it actually looks really cool in real life hopefully you can see it in the photos here So all of today's cards have some really simple ways to add watercolour, a watercolour look to your Christmas card projects, whether it be a wash background with some simple stamping over top or whether just to do a wash of colour on some stamped images. It doesn't get any easier than this and I hope you're inspired to give this a try on your Christmas projects this year. So if you were inspired by today's cards then don't forget to click on the like button 
and also subscribe so you don't miss anything at this channel. I've linked two more videos here from my previous Same But Different Christmas card series from the last year and the year before. I look forward to seeing you there. Till next time, happy paper crafting. Bye.